I like biking. It's my most utilized activity for my family and me, and it has changed the way I, as a person, go about my everyday life. It's without question that New York City has the best modes of transportation within the US than any other state or country besides Asia in places such as Tokyo or Japan. Its rail network is the most unique housing both rapid transit and regional rail in a city which has a substantial amount of excuses for why now it seeks to mitigate future expansions primarily in its rapid transit. Personally, the New York City subway is the best way to get around the four boroughs of Staten Island. It manages to move millions of riders to the best and worst places in the city. Probably the most beneficial lines in the system are that of the B division, all lettered lines. Utilizing longer four side door trains, they can move more people people than the number of lines of the A division. Within Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens, many other lines are interlighted which multiple lines can run on the same track to their designated stations. I use the B division for much of my commute from the Bronx to Manhattan or from Manhattan to the Bronx after finishing cycling down places such as the Hudson River Greenway, which I recommend checking out since it's the most populated bike lane in the US and it connects a lot of people to many tourist attractions within downtown Manhattan. During my commute home, it could be a drag at times, especially during rush hour. Why I'm yapping about this? I made a discovery that not many content creators speak about when talking about the New York City subway system. And the discovery I made during the times I wrote the D opened my eyes to how I see this New York City subway in a modest sense. The B division is kind of shit. <laughs> yes, you heard me. The B division is not a great mode of transportation within the city due to problems that, for some reason, only God knows occur along the B division most of the time. From crime to the average candy seller on board. Seriously, $2 for one candy. Man, I beat the goofy out y'all for turning arm and leg to one bag of m and But the consequential factor in my eyes for why it's substandard is because it was made to be bad. The theme I will be using to describe why the B division sucks in every way possible is quality over quantity. I will be pointing out every design flaw and how it compares to the A division. I will also give my conclusion on improving the flawless system. No, we need to understand the context of why I say it's bad. It's 1922. After working with the former private railroad, the BRT, later known as the BMT, and after almost game-ending his supervisor after he entered a curb too fast, which led to him getting fired and putting him into a Kratos arc against the BRT and IRT, the now present A Division, Irish immigrant descendant John Francis Highland wins the mayoral election for the second time in his career. During his time in office, he proposed an independent city-owned subway that would compete against the private transit companies. Tracks along the first trunk line, the 8th Avenue line, will be four tracks with trains running from 207th and Inwood to Chambers Street. Around 145th Street, the line would branch off further north into the Bronx up to 205th Street, Norwood. Around this official opening in 1932, after pre-21st century conquesters infiltrated the station at 59th Columbus Circle, looting most of the station's features, the line opened. Further expansion has allowed the independent subway to serve people within places like the Far Rockaways, the Grand Concourse, and Central Park. Many stations along the IED system primarily serve residential districts like the Grand Concourse along the Concourse Line and serve fewer places where people would be less likely to work. Rockefeller Center is one example of many commuters taking the 6th Avenue line to what is deemed a tourist attraction due to many stores located in the center, as well as St. Patrick's Cathedral. According to the MTA's By the Numbers report of 2023, the 6th train had more riders than any other rail line in the city. Compare that rider estimate with all other stations within the system and that estimate will be dwarfed. The branches that are served by B division trains are at their best when it's used for conveniences, such as going to school, even though many public schools tend to be located away from the stations, going to see a movie or performance, as well as taking your bike to the park, which I do often. This also explains why there are usually occurrences of crime that happen either on board or at the station and they're contributed because of another major factor.
If you're ever visiting any B Division station outside of Times Square, Lumber Circle, for example, you will notice how spacious the station and platforms are compared to those on the A Division. This was done to cater to neighborhoods' populations, which increase over time. While this design pattern is useful, its potential is minimized due to the exits at some stations being closer to the public or having gates that narrow a walkway for no reason. There's also the issue of not having personnel or security equipment to stop criminals in their tracks. Seriously, why are there still big ass cameras dating back to the 80s within stations that have undergone modernization? There's also the issue of cleanliness, and while almost all of New York City has this problem, there's a shocking amount of deterioration within stations specifically in the B Division. Newman Street along the J and Z is infamous when conversing about the dirtiness and worst stations within the city. There's also the issue of scheduling. The B Division has the most infrequent timing, with trains arriving every 5 to 10 minutes. Whenever the system allows for express service, trains constantly get delayed because of multiple trains running on the same track. This issue results from one of the most loved aspects of the New York City subway system. Returning to the 8th Avenue line, you will see that there are four lines running different destinations. Two lines from their assigned branch line along the same tracks, local and express. What makes the line probably the worst example of interlining trains is how frequently the local trains interfere with the speed and schedule of the express trains. You could be traveling on an express and be stopped at either 1 to 35th or most commonly Columbus Circle due to express or local trains ahead of you needing to be switched it because of an incident further down or up the line. Whenever this happens, it causes an echo chain in which all of the B division becomes goofed up with trains waiting on the spot they're at. A station's layout also plays a role in negatively impacting transit in the city. In the most likely case, the local is given priority and can switch to its assigned line at any time. Whenever this happens, it causes an echo chain in which all of the B division becomes goofed up, with trains waiting on the spot they're at. A station's layout also plays a role in negatively impacting transit in the city. In many stations where express and local trains stop on the same platform, trains usually merge onto lines that branch off of a trunk line. The biggest examples are Columbus and DeKalb Avenue in Brooklyn. Both stations act as junctions for trains, where interlining begins and ends for a line. These junctions are also where trains see the most delays. As stated previously, one line, in most cases the local, is prioritized over the express trains, whose goal and design is to quickly move passengers between two or three boroughs, mine and Staten Island. This is the result of not having platforms serve one branch. Almost all B division branches run on the same track, which creates congestion for trains that have to merge onto the respective branch. As you can tell, I'm illustrating the flaws that the IND system has compared to the IRT. While the system brings people from underserved communities, the competitive mindset that John Hyland and the city took to the table when carving out New York's next expansion in rapid transit was one big cluster stuff. <laughs> Now let's compare the B Division to its successor. Being the first actual subway system to be built, the A Division is much smaller compared to the expansive nature of the B Division. One thing to note about the A Division is that its lines, primarily along 7th Ave and Lexington on the east side of Manhattan, were built separately, with the original layout being in a Z shape. It wasn't until the signing of the dual contracts that the 7th Avenue line, Lexington Avenue line, and the Times Square Shuttle were created. Let's analyze the Lexington line. From Brooklyn Bridge to 125th Street, two lines run express while one runs on the local track. One advantage the Lexington, as well as the 7th Avenue line, have over the 8th Avenue line is fewer lines interact with each other at all times, only coming together at stations that allow for transfers between express and local trains. There's also a great emphasis on moving trains to branches that serve specific places within each borough. For example, trains heading to 125th Street through the Bronx move through tunnels that allow trains to go under existing tunnels while remaining neutral from one another on their respective lines. By only having two tracks and fewer lines running on those tracks, it allows for a more flexible system that can easily branch off trunk lines 
into their own territories within the other boroughs. This could be seen in how far apart they are, with trains running through specific elevated tracks to serve the north and east of their own boroughs. There's a reason why the 7 is undeniably the best in the system, and it's because there is a lack of lines that run along the Flushing line. This also helps express trains, as there isn't a need for them to suddenly branch off the main line to serve neighborhoods that are located away from it. I mean, it is questionable when it comes down to Brooklyn, but I'm pretty sure you get what I'm saying. I know the A Division does have problems similar to the B Division, but it's important to acknowledge these weaknesses if we're ever going to improve rapid transit in the city. The greatest strength of the New York City subway is its ability to evolve no matter the circumstance. As we see now these days, the MTA is constantly finding any way of paying off years of debt because of its failure to keep a consistent budget and heavy reliance on government funding and contractor companies whose labor exceeds a hundred million dollars. This can be seen in how much they prioritize ads involving the message of paying the fare, which has increased it from 2.75 to 2.90 on local buses and subways, and from $6 to $7 on express coach buses. The MTA, like Transit City 3 on Roblox, is doing too much with too little. Instead of focusing on the future, we should prioritize what we have in the present. Things such as cleanliness, safety, and most importantly, change in how people spend their time underground should be prioritized. Install more art pieces, more LED billboards, Better lightning, hell, even install dedicated subway cars that allow for bikes to be stored in as many New Yorkers are bringing their bikes on board the trains and because biking in New York is reaching an all-time high than any other city besides Boston. Stations with limited standing space such as 86 on Lexington should be spaces for possible accessibility via elevators and escalators. People should have a reason to take the subway besides driving and the MTA has shown in the past that it could create an enjoyable system that is clear of any criticism. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video essay. This took me a while to script. This is also the first time I utilized much of my equipment that I had to look for via Amazon and stores such as Best Buy, but I did enjoy what I was able to accomplish even in the wake of college and how much input I had to put into it for the sake of my bachelor's. And I do intend to make more videos similar to these where I go in depth on topics in my point of view. I hope you like and subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like these. See you in the next video.